Hello, brothers and sisters in Christ. These guys right here are my little guys. They're not little anymore. There's two of my, they used to be my baby chicks. Um, I got a surprise last night. Uh, br my brother bought me a little air rifle and said I could use them on some of the rats because we're having some major rat problems. And I caught two huge rats this morning in the traps. Here he comes. But, uh, I said in one of my last videos I've had a problem with mites and they killed one of them. They killed, uh, one of my chickens that were setting on the eggs. So now I got the eggs on the incubator, hoping that the incubator will work. But I came through here and saw something rustling in the bushes under here. I already pulled it out. I'll show you what it is in a bit. But I threw some of the bones of the fish. You'll see, see if you can make that out. When I go fishing, I let the bones and, and the head for the chickens to, to chew on. And then I'll throw the bones in the hillside or I'll put them in the garden. If it's the right time of the year, I'll put them in the garden. And they make great soil. So, but I got an infestation in here. And I, you got to spray everything. Since I don't have dirt for ground, I have mulch. I had to spray the mulch. I had to get in here, put that uh, powder down. You can see some of the powder there. Put the powder down, spray in here hardcore. I put a lot of... I forgot my brain freezes sometimes, but... I had to put some herbs in here that have strong oil smells. The oil scent will drive them away. And so I sprayed this hole inside, replaced a lot of the, the mulch in there, the bedding. And it's just been a struggle and a fight trying to get rid of these mites. Uh, I didn't show it down there, but down there where the rooster is. I don't know. I'm sorry for the shaking, brother says Christ. There we go. I put ash on the ground where they do their dust baths because I was told ash on the ground helps them but you don't want the ash wet you want it dry and powdery um, like ash from wood paper okay and it also helps drive the mites away even more so that's what i did down there there's my owl that doesn't work there's another owl down here supposed to keep the mice away but it doesn't work <laughs> the mice are out here getting into the food and everything so i locked the chickens up here at night there's my repeating cage and there's my uh, live traps. I have three of them. And I catch, between these four cages, I catch at least two rats a day. Mice or rats a day. It's a lot of them. But the big thing is, is that uh, this is what I caught. I shot, got them shot last night because these guys were coming around. And I'm sorry for the shaking, brothers and sisters of Christ. It's a skunk. It's not, the, it's not the biggest skunk in the world, but it's a skunk. I, I remember talking once, Brothers of Christ, where I got a um, a baby skunk caught in here once. I don't know if you can see that. But there we go. Hey, we got an egg. I had to put powder in these. It's just the wrong angle to really get in there. But I had to put some powder in these. Um, so we look. I'll go ahead and get the egg. So I don't forget, but I always look at the eggs to make sure, see if we can get them in the right light. Because you can easily see the mites on the eggs, but there's no mites on this egg. So the Lord is blessing me. We're clearing this thing out. They'll lay eggs down there sometimes. But I have built these three lower nests because it seemed like the more chickens I got, because I started out with like seven, six or seven chickens. And uh, these guys, if they get into the pen or if they get into this back area where my baby chicks are, when they're small, they'll kill them. They'll go after my baby chicks. Um, and they'll eat the heads. They just eat the heads of the chickens and they leave the rest of the body just lay, laying there. So these are one of the predators that only come out at night predominantly. But if it gets cloudy before it's nighttime, like today, it's a good, beautiful blue sky. But if it's cloudy, right as the sun's going down, it'll get darker sooner. And these guys will start coming out earlier. So, yeah, I got him last night. Praise the Lord. The chicken coop seems to be doing a lot better. But I'm going to have to keep uh, spraying it out. 
uh, off and on for the next couple months to try to get rid of it. Uh, for some of the brethren that were asking about the garden, the garden is doing amazing. I've been eating stuff out of the garden. So the garden's doing good. There's some cabbage there. These have went too far. They're um, cauliflower. But uh, right here, if I can separate this, we got some good cauliflower we're going to eat. But this is what happens when cauliflower goes to uh, seed. I was letting some of them go to seed. So then when they start forming seeds, I can collect seeds for next year. Down here, it's the smallest bell pepper in the world. I don't think it'll get any bigger than that. But I'm trying. I'm just not good. This is not the best place in the world to do bell peppers unless you've got a greenhouse. And I don't have a greenhouse, but I'm trying. There's a yellow bell pepper one right there. It's got a lot of bulbs on it. I thought it was going to die earlier because it got down to very little because of our cold snap. But I've been babying it, and it's been coming back pretty good. But all these are different uh, um, squashes and stuff. That's what those are. And then you got onions galore. I put, someone gives me tons of onions every year. So like little, they're already at seed where they grow them to where there's just a little stalk. And then they wrap them together in like 200. And they sell them. And I have uh, neighbors that I give eggs to that every year they're, they're nice about it. And they give me lots of these onions. So I got onions everywhere. Uh, tomatoes, these tomato plants are not doing so healthy. I moved them over here, but uh, this one's just not doing that good at all. I don't think that's going to survive. I'm going to keep babying it and seeing, because we just haven't had, had a lot of sun. Yesterday it was cloudy all day until like 3 to 4 o'clock in the afternoon. And we need sun. My corn, I thought they were all dead because of that cold snap that we had. But I kept babying these guys too, and now look at them. Praise the Lord. Not my doing. Praise the Lord. To God be the glory. And then my lettuce, I come out here and grab lettuce to have salad. Here's the red lettuce. And then my green lettuce is doing amazing. Praise the Lord. Tons of green lettuce. I have neighbors that come by and want to get some of the green lettuce. <laughs> Just does amazing. And then strawberries galore. Strawberries back here galore. That's the plant I talked about. That's It's a Jewish uh, root. And you eat the roots because they form good roots and then they grow this tall. And when they get this tall, they'll start flowering. And when they start flowering, that's when you know it's ready to um, harvest the roots. And you start all over next year and you plant more roots and they go crazy. But this thing is tall. It's taken over. It's doing great. My potatoes, not so great. But like I said, that cold snap, they started growing really strong when it got warm. We got this really strong warmth that got up to like 90 degrees on the deck. And then boom, it shot back down to 60 degrees. And we had some rain left and right. It got really cold. And my potatoes got that cold snap. And I'm trying to baby them, but I don't think they're going to make it this year. I probably won't get but a few potatoes this year. Because this, this, both these potatoes, bins should look like that guy right there. should be nothing but all this green, hardcore, growing up at least a foot or two. And they're, they're struggling to grow. So, uh, Brother Jesus Christ, it's not hard to do uh, gardens. You can do an indoor garden where you have your own, you know, any container will do with some dirt in it. And you can learn to grow stuff inside. Mm -hmm. Find a room that gets a good sun for like two or three hours a day. Um, if you can, uh, like with my house, I have some of the sunroofs put in. The... Uh, square skylights where it lets sun shine down through so I don't even have to turn on the lights during the summer I don't hardly turn on any lights inside during the summer because it those skylights let the sun through and it lights the whole house up during the summer during the winter when the sun goes down or it's rainy I'll have to turn on some lights during the winter I'm sorry during the winter when it's rainy I'll have to turn on some lights or even if it's a sunny day the sun goes down at six o'clock so from six to eight I'll turn on some lights but you hardly have to turn on any lights with those skylights. There's my herb garden. It needs to be trimmed back a little bit but I just wanted to give you a little bit of an update brother says Christ the Lord has blessed me greatly. This garden is doing great. My one problem I'm having now is all these strawberries that I have planted everywhere. <laughs> um, the um, chipmunks i love the chipmunks but now i'm getting like 50 chip i'm exaggerating but i counted like five to ten chipmunks at one time they're in my garden they're in the chicken feed and i'm wondering if i'm gonna have to start trapping chipmunks and i don't want to they're really you know 
but they're coming back here. I, ca I catch them getting all my strawberries before I can get any of the strawberries. Because you got one right there. It looks like it's going to be great. So I'm waiting for it to turn red. But by the time it turns red, they'll come out here and snag it before I get it. So um, two things. The grapes. Brothers of Christ. Look how God has blessed these grapes. They start out very small. And they take a good while. And then they're grabbing onto the fence. Which is great. This guy I had to push him over to start grabbing the fence. Got this guy long enough over here to grab the fence. I did four of them. This guy still has to grow taller before I can push him over towards the fence. But once they grab the fence, I'm hoping they'll just start taking off. So next year, they'll take off hardcore, and they'll fill the fence line all the way down that way, fill the fence line all the way down that way, and they can keep going through even past that gate. But we'll have grapes, which will be a blessing. This tree, I feel so bad because it got uh, leaf curl. I remember talking about that, Brother Sister Christ. It got leaf curl. There's some holes in that leaf. It lost a lot of leaves. And because of the leaf curl, a lot of the stuff went bad. Let's see if I can get around. Sorry. But right there, the Lord blessed me with one good peach. This is a peach tree, if people don't know. There we go. It's a peach tree. There's only one peach left, period, on this whole tree. Everything else started to die out. There's some, like little peaches around it but they start dying out and fizzling out and not growing so they're the only thing they'll start doing that right there where they just start drying out and everything and they stop growing so i've only got one peach so i keep praying for the lord to let me have that one peach <laughs> um but we had leaf curl really bad this year we were able to spray it save the tree of course and tree's doing great but that leaf curl really killed a lot of the fruit that was going to be on it. So, and it's leaning right now. So I'm trying to grow this section out, if you can see it. I'm trying to grow that section out so it grows out to be a long stalk this direction. So it just will be a V to offset this tree leaning. So, but the highlight of this morning is coming out. I saw something rustling in the trees. I shot it. A couple times with the, it's like a BB rifle, but it's an air rifle. And then I came out this morning and found out exactly what it was. It was that skunk that keeps coming around. And uh, you get that skunk smell everywhere around the house. And I uh, had my, uh, my my brother, when he came to visit, he's like, what's that skunk smell? I have neighbors that stop by and go, what's that skunk smell? Well, this guy kept coming around, getting in, trying to get into the chicken coop. And, uh, and everything. So... Brother, sister of Christ, please keep praying for the chicken coop. Please, please pray for the chickens if you can. But like I said, this month I didn't want to make this a big deal even though I was losing chickens and I'm really fighting the mites. The brethren, the condition of the brethren is far more important, brother, sister of Christ. So please, 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 more than anything, make sure you're praying for the brethren, uh, the condition of the brethren, the state of the body of Christ in these last days. Uh, that, that's that's priority uh, that we're staying true to the Lord we're staying true we're putting on the whole armor of God we're being good ambassadors and we understand that being an ambassador means this isn't our home that brethren aren't getting so comfortable down here that this is becoming more like the physical this life down here is more important than rewards in heaven and being a servant to God and being a servant to the brethren and some of the brethren understand what I'm talking about like this house I've gotten used to this down here, and I keep telling the Lord, please, Lord, I'd gladly give all this up to be part of a house church, but, you know, I, I miss this very much because we get so used to things down here, and we start making it more of a priority over living a life of Christ and doing what's right by the Lord. We start doing what's right by ourselves, and worldliness starts coming in. So... When you're an ambassador for Jesus Christ, that means you're in a foreign land. It's not where you live. It's just, this is, I always keep telling myself, this isn't my home. This is just where I dwell until God calls me to my real home. And I got to keep telling myself that, brothers and Christ, and you got to keep telling yourself that. So uh, I don't want to get into too much. This was not, just, just, just a walk, a little bit, walk and talk, letting you know about the chickens and what I had to get done with the chickens. And what I, what I caught last night, I wanted to share that with the brethren. Uh, brothers of Christ, just keep praying for one another. Keep living, being a good ambassador for Jesus Christ. Remember the ministry of reconciliation, handing out those gospel tracts. When God opens doors, at, keep praying every day for courage so that when do, God does open doors, you can walk right through them. 
and a witness for Jesus Christ with the life that you're living as well as with your words. Okay. So grace and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all and my love for you which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Thank you for watching.